I suppose I should confirm that I did not do this. I'm not stupid. I invest all of my money into the Catholic Church in exchange for a promise of an un- <laughs> Oh God, I just read it. Today's episode of the show is brought to you by Squarespace. More about them in just a little bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I, as ever, am your host, Simon. Welcome to the show. This one, most common internet scams. And by the way, people message me on Twitter with alarming regularity. And like on the subreddit and all of this stuff, uh, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Simon Whistler, by the way, if you want to go over there. Um, And they're like, is Simon wanting to message me on Telegram about this PS5 I won? No, no. And in a... Like, I don't want to be like, you're a bit dumb. But when people message me about that, I'm like, really? Isn't this the sort of shit that my, like, like my grandma would fall for because she's like got dementia or something? Like, I mean, come on. This isn't, this isn't something that someone who watches this would fall for, is it? You guys are all big brains. They're stupid to us. It's obviously not me. And people are like, Simon, could you do something about this? And it's like, bruh. <laughs> Do you really think that I could do something about this? What, go through and delete every comment manually? Because, no, it's obviously a bot doing it. I can't keep up. YouTube need to do something about this. For f**k's sake, get your shit together, YouTube. Put it in a shit museum. I don't care what you do. You just gotta get it together. If you're new here, this channel isn't just about me ranting. That's a large part of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read a script that Dave has written for me. And uh, that's, that's the main crux of it. I'm sorry. Look, I know we're a minute and a half in. And nothing has happened yet. I'm sorry. Let's go. Upon checking my various email accounts this morning, I discovered that I had not unusually received a fair amount of junk mail. Oh my god, yeah, it's so true. Like, I'll look at that spam folder and you'll be like, no! <laughs> what do you want, Nigeria? How many princes do you have? On top of the large amount of video suggestions that I now receive on a daily basis due to the perhaps ill-conceived idea of posting a dedicated comment form into several of the comment sections of videos and offering people the chance to suggest their own ideas, yeah, Dave was like, can I do this? And I was like, your funeral, Dave. <laughs> do you think there's a, there's a reason there's not a suggestion box on my website, Dave? <laughs> do you really want that to be the nightmare that is your life, Dave? And he was like, yes, Simon, I do. And I'm like, all right, enjoy, Dave. You go for it. He's already dead. I also had received several of the now ubiquitous phishing emails. I'm sure that most people watching this will now be aware of exactly the type of message that I'm referring to. One message telling me I'd won $100 million on a non-existent lottery. One from a dying old lady who wished to bequeath me a fortune as long as I promised to use it to aid various charities. And one sender claimed to have been monitoring all of my computer usage for the last three months and threatened to expose it to all my friends, family, and work colleagues unless I sent them a large amount of money via Bitcoin. Anyone who did that to me, like, would just be like, it's it's very boring. <laughs> the shit that I get up to is very... I, if I went through my internet search history, it's just going to be like... What was I searching this? I, I've become obsessed with GTP3, the, the, the language thing. I've become a, the, the writing thing. I was recently looking at this, some really nice furniture that I bought, like a nice desk chair and a little chair that I sit on over there. My office I was researching some It's very boring! <laughs> also, last year, no, this year, this year, you, did you ever guys play that game, the game of life, when you were a kid? It's like, your great aunt has died and has left you some money. And I always thought that's kind of like bullshit. My great aunt, who I I don't know if I'd ever met. I think I'd met her once in my life. I got an email from a lawyer <laughs> being like, hey, just an FYI, your great aunt has died and she has left you some money. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then my uncle uh, wrote me a message. She was, it was, she was his aunt yeah and uh no so my my random great aunt who i'd never met actually left me money like not a small amount of money and i was like tight Average. um anyway great story simon thank you <laughs> feels like the most privileged thing ever <laughs> a random relative who you never let met left you money great i was i was happy about that i found this last one to be particularly interesting wait what last one i got on like seven different tangents oh exposing dave's internet history as the sender was undoubtedly a master hacker and had absolutely definitely gained access to all my accounts they also somehow managed to use the wrong pronoun when addressing me and had included two spelling mistakes in my name <laughs> Yeah, I mean, these guys are not the biggest of brains, but obviously it works. You know what's funny? Um, if you get one of these emails, you know you can look up Bitcoin wallets, right? Because it's all public. 
And if you look up that wallet, just Google like Bitcoin wallet lookup or transfers or whatever, and you put it in, you can see people falling for this scam because you could see like, oh, that person paid, there was this much paid in, there was this much paid in from these Bitcoin wallets. So you could see the scam working. And it's like, oh God, stop it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Someone's making so much money, like in the shittiest way possible. For some reason, this led me to question the legitimacy of their claims. However, it all got me thinking how many people actually fall for these desperate money grabbing scams. Obviously, people must fall for them or there would be no reason for their continuing existence. Today, we're going to take, oh God, this is the introduction. And it's not even Dave's fault. It's sick with six minutes in. It's, it's entirely my fault because I went on to like seven different tangents about my great bloody aunt, which sounds insane. What am I doing with my life? Why are you the way that you are? And why exactly so many people fall for them? Nigerian print scam. The classic. Almost anybody who's ever been in possession of an email account will either have received one of these messages or a variation thereof. For anybody who has been living under a rock or utilizes only the most heavy duty spam filtering software, the basic idea behind the Nigerian print scam is as follows. The potential mark receives an email purporting to be from an exceptionally wealthy Nigerian prince or other such unlikely individual. It's often a lot of like, for me, like whenever I delve into my spam it's it seems to be like hello sir i am the un attache out of lagos nigeria i have recently discovered an unused bank account and i need you it's like okay they they did all it's this it's the nigerian print scam but it's no longer a prince it's a diplomat or a, an attache is an attache an attache is like a non-fancy diplomat right it's like a low-level diplomat or is it the other way around no that's an ambassador I don't know. I don't care. It's people. They're always like they've discovered some money somewhere that they need your help with, but and they just need you to send them a little bit of money first. The Nigerian prince in question usually claims that they have a huge amount of money that they wish to invest in your country, and they require someone there to go between. They need someone to hide a huge amount of money for them because they're either currently incarcerated or at great risk of becoming so in the near future. Or occasionally they just have too much money and they've decided to give it away. <laughs> One problem that I feel I don't have is too much money. Like, does any does does Bill Gates think, oh man, I got too much money? He probably does, doesn't he? Actually, I guess that's how you know you're rich. You're like, man, I have too much money. I don't, <laughs> just I don't even know. I don't even know how much money I have. <laughs> Whatever the alleged reason for contacting you, time is always of the essence, and they request that you send them information such as your account number, your sort code, your address, your national security number, uh, national security number, if, national insurance number, not sorry, uh, which is like the British equivalent of the national security number, and even sometimes, isn't it called a social number, social insurance number, something like that? I saw like a, was it a CGP Grey video about why these are shit? something like that? I don't know. Fascinating tangent, Simon. Let's carry on. And even sometimes a photograph of your passport or your driver's license just to prove who you are, they, that you are, in fact, who they think you are. Basically, a huge chunk of information that you should never give a stranger over the internet. Yeah, just don't be giving out your personal information. But, like, bank account sort number, sure. Like, if I pay someone, like, it's, this is, like, um, the main two bank details that you need to pay someone to, like, a UK bank account. Like, if I'm paying someone... Like, I'll be like, I need your account number and sort code. No one thinks that's weird. But when they're like, and I need your address, I need a photograph. Also, just send me a scan of your passport or birth certificate and your insurance number. Then you're like, no. <laughs> no. No, sir, I don't like it. After the mark has provided this information, one of a few things is likely to happen. It's important to point out at this stage, to, do the best, to the best of my knowledge, none of these involve the mark receiving a huge payment into their account immediately. Instead, it's likely that the scammer will either use this information to attempt to extract money from the mark's bank account or simply use the freely given information to commit identity fraud. So, why do people fall for this seemingly obvious scam? Obviously, the elderly and other vulnerable groups are, on average, more likely to be taken in by such deceptions, but that is not always the case. You only have to do a quick Google search to discover that plenty of people who certainly should have known better have also been deceived. Time for another quick tangent. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. But one of these I've almost fallen for. Like, in only once that I'm aware, I, I feel like if I'd have fallen from it, fallen for it, I would definitely know because there'd be someone out there like, I don't know. Do inst what do people do when they steal your identity? They take your like, they they open credit cards in your name and shit like that. And uh, but also, what's what's the end game there? If someone took out a credit card in my name, 
right? They stole my identity and they took out a credit card in my name and they spent, spent loads of money. And then I started getting uh, letters from a, from a bank being like, you owe us like 20 grand or whatever. I'd just be like, nah, I'm not going to pay that. And then what, go, what happens from there? It's like my credit's ruined. I don't give a fuck. I don't have credit. Like, I don't, this isn't something that I, I think we have it in the UK, but I'd never have needed credit in the UK. But where I live in, in Czech Republic, this, it doesn't exist as far as I'm aware. Like, I've never had any issues with it. I've never built credit. I've, I've never really made, like, I, I've done nothing like this. It doesn't matter. So, what's the end game? But it's fun. <laughs> What's the end game, bank? What are you gonna do? You gonna come into my house and take my TV? Good f***ing luck, mate, honestly. What's, I don't know. I'm sure people are like, Simon, I had my identity stolen and then the bank came and took my TV away and it sucked. And I'll be like, oh, okay, so it does happen. That would be intense. Maybe that is what happens. I know you're here for me to, uh, you know, tell you facts, but sometimes I, I like to ask these questions and then people in the comments will let me know and then it makes it enjoyable for me to read later. Which I say, and I know is not like professional or good YouTubing, but it, it does make my life more interesting and that's really what this is all about, isn't it? Oh, so I was saying about the one I almost fell for. It was just some stupid one where it was like, you've got a package from UPS or FedEx or whoever. And I was like, literally every day I get packages from UPS and FedEx and you know, the litany of other three letter DPD, GLS, all of these companies very creatively named like um fbi cia but for delivery and they're like yeah you have to pay this customs thing and i'm like this is literally a part of like regular life for me and i was like wait a minute wait a minute i've never seen this website before fedex normally i have to fill out some bullshit government and then i'm like oh it's at fedex with like two x's.com or whatever and I, that's the closest I've come. So no, I didn't fall for it, but it was close. I just don't trust anybody like that. Whilst it's not entirely clear as to why this happened so frequently, having read a number of accounts from previous victims, I'm inclined to believe that the problem lies with the human propensity for hope. Oh God, that's sad. Much the same way that millions of people buy lottery tickets every week, even though you are much more likely to be hit by lightning and then crushed by a falling piano in the same day than you are to actually win. Don't play the lottery, just stop it. And even if you win, it's probably going to be more sh than you think. Like, I can imagine nothing worse than winning the lottery. Because then, everyone will be like... Like, when I was younger, I was like, that would be sick. But now, I realize there's nothing that would f you up more. Because you just... No matter what happens, no matter what you achieve in your life, everyone's gonna be like, oh, because you won the lottery. Yeah, he started off with that, like, 100 mil or whatever. So, yeah, he can't really... You know, Simon's YouTube empire. And I'm not saying that I've built my YouTube, like, content... Like, I, you know, I, it's this, like, scale of privilege, right? Obviously, some people, they start and they're living on the streets and then they build, you know, like... Facebook. It's not Mark Zuckerberg. He was, he's also privileged. But, you know, people start from one place and then they go somewhere else. But starting after winning the lottery when you're like 18 or whatever, no one is ever going to take you seriously. Which would suck. Even if I won it now, people would be like, oh yeah, no, but he won the lottery, did he? It would suck. Don't play the lottery. That's the whole thing. It's a tax on stupid people. People believe that maybe, just maybe, they've actually stumbled upon something that will legitimately make their fortune. So let me interrupt today's video really quickly to tell you about today's fantastic sponsor, Squarespace, which is absolutely the best place that you should be making a website. If you've got some idea for, I don't know, a business, a blog, whatever, anything you might need a website for, just go over to squarespace.com and see the beautiful selection of templates that they have. All you got to do is you sign up, then you select one of those templates, then it opens opens it up in this like beautifully designed web editing interface where you need to know no code by the way nothing like that you just drag and drop things into place you change the colors you tweak things you add a page it's got it's super feature rich you got all of these extra features and everything it's very easy to do whether you uh I, look, even if you are some sort of web designer or like computer coder just use squarespace because it is going to be easier and it is going to look better because all of their stuff is just beautifully designed plus it's got loads of extra features member areas uh, squarespace makes it easy for creators to and educators to monetize their content and expect expertise in a way that fits with their brands with member areas you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to content like classes online courses or newsletters i don't do that but maybe i should maybe i should make some exclusive content in a member area also you could do email campaigns collect donations they of course provide in-depth analytics blogging tools you can connect your social media accounts really everything you could ever want to do 
So all you need to do is go to squarespace.com to get started. As I said, try out their templates. And then when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash blaze and you'll save 10% of your first purchase of a website or a domain. And now back to today's video. Advanced Payment Scam Although in many ways the Advanced Payment Scam is just an adaptation of the Nigerian print scam, with the former often incorporating aspects of the latter and vice versa, the Advanced Payment Scam as a concept offers far more flexibility and as such far more opportunities to part people from their money. And exa- Wait, so the Nigerian prince is about just stealing people's identities? I thought it was also about, you know, I, I guess this is my idea of the nigerian prince is the money is extracted from the advance payment like hey i need 200 dollars to process your 200 million dollar payment sort of thing right okay carry on simon an example of an early advance payment scam might read as follows greetings beneficiary i am righty so that i might inform you that uh, you is potentially running out of time to claim your unclaimed inheritance left with me by your late deceased unknown relative <laughs> I, I know right this is why it's like oh this is what happened to me and i'm like i haven't been scammed i actually got money Woo! Order for that I might make you transfer direct to you. You must immediately send me administration fee of $200. <laughs> Is this some common amount? I just pulled that out of my ass. <laughs> Along with your name, date of birth, banking information, and a photograph of a valid identification document. Please do not delay. Payment of $200 can be made via Bitcoin or Western Union. <laughs> I don't know much about Western Union, but... Like, Bitcoin, I understand. Like, that's the sort of scammer's currency. Right, but Western Union, aren't you gonna have some sort of paperwork or some like that? I like it. It's fun. It makes my dick hard. It's your Western Union, I've heard of you. You're old and you got that yellow and black logo and you see it at post offices. And I'm like, it's for sending money, but I'm like, we live in the future, just use an app, bro. What's going on? Or they might think that nobody would ever respond to such an email. When I looked up the Bitcoin wallet that sent to me in a similar email, there was an exceptionally depressing amount about ingoing traffic. Interestingly, although it may appear to be counterproductive to send such poorly written emails, there's a reason behind it. According to several scam baiters, people who make it their business to go out of the way to, into, uh, to inconvenience these unscrupulous individuals as much as possible, there are some amazing YouTube channels that do this. Um, there's the dude who plays the old lady. Um, God damn it. I really, someone will mention this in the comments and I can't remember the guy's name. It's, I only don't know his name because it's always all over my, uh, YouTube homepage. And it's, oh, hello. Yes, no, it's, it's so, and he uses like voice changes and shit. Is it Kit Boga? Kit Boda? Kid Boda? Something like this. It's so good. The emails are constructed, at least in part, to filter out people who are unlikely to fall for the scam in the first place. While a craftier email may get the attention of more people, many of them would turn out to be false positives who can't contact with the scammer before handing over any cash. A consistently obvious email narrows down the pool of responders to the most gullible individuals, aka the people scammers are looking to target. Your name, Dub Dub. As I previously mentioned, this particular style of scam is not limited to deceiving the gullible with regards to fictitious inheritance. A common scam at the moment, especially in the UK, involves individuals receiving a text message that claims to be from UPS or some other parcel delivery service. Exactly. This isn't just in the UK. This is like Europe wide. The message will claim that your parcel is ready to be delivered, but due to some unforeseen issue, usually the parcel being slightly overweight or not having the correct amount of import duty paid, it cannot be delivered to you unless the remaining balance is settled. The message will contain a link allowing you to quickly and easily make the payment before getting on with your day, excitedly waiting for the delivery of your package, which of course will never arrive. I know exactly what you're looking for. No! And this is the thing, like, uh, you know, I get packages that I don't even know about. Like, literally, look. Like, this arrived yesterday, and there's another huge scale electrics kit. Someone just sent this to me. Like, a company. Don't get any ideas. I don't have, a, like, a public address you can send to. But for some reason, I must be advertising this or something in the future. I have no idea why, but it just arrives this huge box with all of these kits. And I'm like, great. Great, but most people don't have just random parcels arriving for them. Like, constantly. So many people have fallen for this scam that companies such as Royal Mail have dedicated entire pages of their website to warn people against it. One version of the advanced payment scam is particularly clever as it utilizes two aspects of modern life. Firstly, the majority of people are usually waiting for some form of delivery, be it Amazon, eBay, or any other online retailer. Secondly, the amount that is requested is relatively small, often between 5 and 10 pounds. Although people will often complain about paying hidden fees, a large amount of those people are prepared to just say f it and just pay the fee in order to get whatever is delivered as quickly as possible this is so true like i literally this morning i got two bills 
One was from the gas company, or one was from like, it was like a postal company or something. And I don't even know what it is, but it looks official. I do check that it comes from like an email address that is like actually, you know, not like johnblogs at gmail.com. Um, but I'm just like, yeah. And you, do you guys have QR code payments? Is that a thing outside of this country where you scan with your phone and then it just automatically does the payment? It's amazing. Um, and yeah, I just I just paid those. And I'm just like, they're like, yeah, yeah, you did pay enough gas last year. Like your meter was over by like, it was like a few hundred quid. I was like, Patch! and I just do it. And I'm just like, okay. And then another one arrives and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Should I be keeping track of this? Yes. Am I ever going to? No. It's like those guys who did that scam where they just sent emails. They just sent invoices to like Google or something and Google just paid them. They just kept paying them because someone in the council is like, yeah, seems legit. I guess we do pay this guy. What's going on? Could you pay me in advance? <laughs> Another version of the advanced payment scam that has risen to prominence over the last couple of years is one that, as people who are already watching YouTube, should always be all, be all too familiar with. This is the one we're talking about. I just want to add on to Dave's entry because I feel like he missed something really important. This isn't about scamming people for five or ten quid, Dave. This is about people putting their bank account details, and rather than charging them five to ten quid, they've then got that 16 digit number and the CVC code or whatever it's called. CVV? C CTV? CCV? The code on the back, the little three digits that they're all CVV. Right? You know what? You guys know what I mean. What are we talking about? And then they'll just be like, yeah, 500 quid, 1,000 quid, or whatever, until it declines the payments. <laughs> because obviously they're not doing this for five to 10 quid. Scams utilizing online bots can often be seen in YouTube comment sections. They will be there below, I promise you. The first message will often read something like, loving life, last month I made $100,000 investing with Bitcoin expert Dr. Bullshit Money Stealer and you can too. And then loads of, sorry, I'll just read because Dave's going to cover this. I just, I'm just so familiar with these, I want to comment. Almost immediately, certainly much faster than any genuine human could type, the comment itself will receive comments heaping praise upon the eminent Dr. Money Stealer, along with providing several methods as to how best to contact him via WhatsApp or Telegram. Telegram's a weird one. Like, I have Telegram, um, and I feel slightly dirty. Like, a friend of mine's just like, yeah, no, I use Telegram. Like, does anyone else have this? Like, we, I use WhatsApp, I use Signal, I use Telegram. Uh, I think that's the main three, but there's probably another one somewhere. Uh, but it's like, why? Why do we have to use all these different ones? I know WhatsApp's owned by Facebook and all that shit. It is encrypted. It's not that I trust Facebook. I don't trust anybody. Um, but like, Telegram is always like, it just seems you read about Telegram and it's like, oh yeah, no, terrorists are using it. Or like, because um, they, they, their whole thing is like privacy and no moderation, right? Maybe it's not terrorists, but it's like Russian military groups and stuff that are all coordinating on telegram and you're like oh telegram you've not got a good reputation and your your competition is literally whatsapp which is owned by facebook sorry meta and that's that that's the, i'm thinking yeah that's so much better it's so much cleaner than telegram where i just feel like a terrorist in my opinion allegedly right anyone else get that vibe it's just me and my friends who make who was like i use telegram he's not a terrorist he's a youtuber as well it's like okay <laughs> I would like to, I would, I would like to be a, a terrorist. If you actually do contact Dr. Money Stealer, as I did when researching this script, Dave, love it, original research, you will quickly be advised to transfer as much money as you can into Bitcoin and then send it to him so he can begin his largely unspecified investment magic. I suppose I should confirm that I did not do this. I'm not stupid. I invest all of my money into the Catholic Church in exchange for a promise of an un... <laughs> oh God, I just read it. Of a molestation-free afterlife. Oh no, I've given no money to the Catholic Church. All I'm going to do in the afterlife is get molested by a priest. That would be weird. It'd be like, first, they make me 11 years old. And then they molest me. <laughs> That's the heaven that we're looking forward to if we don't give money to the Catholic Church. Jesus, Dave. That is a... That is dark. Unfortunately, due to the nature of evolving bot technology, there is very little that either YouTube or YouTube creators can do to stop this. If a creator blocks an account from posting, there are literally millions ready to take its place. Yeah, it's like you can block it. You're like, block, 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 block. Doesn't make a f***ing difference at all. According to one eminent YouTuber who was kind enough to discuss the subject with me some months ago, frankly, reporting- Oh, is this me? <laughs> I was like, Dave knows another YouTuber? I mean, he does, because I know he writes for uh, another channel, actually. Um, but 
I think this is me. Because I'm, you know, so eminent. <laughs> Frankly, reporting one person doesn't really do anything. They have thousands of accounts, and as soon as one gets taken down, another appears, and then all the other accounts just flood in with their likes and comments. It's crazy. It, it is crazy. I don't remember using that. It was this me. It was this me. I don't remember half my life. Like, it's just from one thing to another. <laughs> Your computer has a virus. Almost anybody who has spent any time browsing the internet is likely to have come across the following pop up Warning, we have detected a virus on your system. Click here to remove. Yeah, you guys know this one. It's like, <laughs> Any website you visit that isn't 100% savory is going to have one of these. <laughs> <laughs> not that I ever visit unsavory websites. The trouble is that more often than not, this particular message has not come from any antivirus software that you might have installed and is instead the beginning of a malicious attack. Clicking on the option to remove the virus will more than likely cause you serious problems during the several years I spent running my own IT repair business. This almost feels like Danny's life. Danny ran a dating dating thing, but it was also like technology based, wasn't he? On some Commodore 64 or, or is that a games console? I don't know. No, whatever. <laughs> During the several years I ran my own IT repair business, I lost count of the amount of people who came to me requesting help after doing exactly this. These pop-ups usually install some sort of ransomware, which locks down your system until you pay a fee to have it removed. It is also possible for such software to install keylogging software, which sends all information typed on your keyboard straight to the virus's creator. Now that'd be a problem. Like, my internet history is going to be very boring, but I do buy a ton of f***ing on the internet, and I'm just like... 60-digit numbers! And for some reason, you know, I don't know, like, I've got like 19 different bank cards because you get these apps and then I have like bank accounts and then business bank accounts and you're like, oh my god, it's like keeping track of all of this shit, it's insane. As you may be able to imagine, the second option could be exceptionally detrimental to both the user's security and privacy. And by the way, I will say that anytime like I'm shopping, like if I do like a one-off purchase from a website, I always just use, um, you guys have got to get Revolut. I don't know if it's a, it is in America now. I know it's in America. It's not everywhere. It's not everywhere, but it's Revolut. R E V. Oh God, I don't even know how to spell it. Look, if you just Google it, it's like Revolt, but with um, it's slightly different. It doesn't matter. But what they do is you could do disposable virtual cards. So you just go into the app, and this is why like, I have so many because you've got you can just make as many cards as you want, and you could cancel them, you can freeze them. It's cool. But one of the coolest things. This sounds like an ad read. It's not. It's just such a good service. You can go in there. You create a single use card. So you go onto the website. You pay once. It debits it from your like overall balance because you just have like one main balance that all of these cards are attached to and then it's like once it's done it's just like the card burns and it will never work again and it just like the number disappears so if that website tries to bill you again it's fucking super useful for free trials so if you're signing up to a free trial from like I don't want to say use it with my sponsors, but if you know. <laughs> uh, and they're like, yeah, you know, you get the first month for free. And then it's like, yeah, and then they bill you and you forget. And then, you know, six years later, you're still paying for this same service. You're like, what's going on? <laughs> Why? Just use one of these uh, virtual cards. Just type in the numbers and then uh, just destroy the card. You just click this burn button or destroy or whatever it's called. It's amazing. Just go do it. It's free. The whole thing is free. Or it's like you can get a premium account, but you don't need it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Do you remember when banking used to be like a pain in the ass? And now it's just like, there's apps. <laughs> it's amazing. Although the majority of people are aware of this kind of attack, fewer people are aware that it's possible to fall victim to a similar attack without going online at all in the traditional sense. One afternoon, about seven years ago, I was sitting in my lounge discussing this very topic with a friend of mine who works in cybersecurity when, happy coincidence, my landline telephone began to ring. Seven years ago? I didn't have a landline. I don't think I've ever had a landline telephone. I mean, my parents did, so when I lived at home, you'd be like, hello, Whistler residence. <laughs> but like, no, I've never had it myself. I'd find it weird that someone can just phone you and you just, like, you can't put it on silence. You can't, there's, there's, you can't see who's calling you. Like, what's up? Not answering the voice at the other end of the line told me that they had some bad news. They were calling from my internet service providers to alert me to the fact that they detected several viruses on the computers at my house. <laughs> Your ISB can't f***ing do that. In order to rectify this problem, I'd need to grant them remote access to my computer. As a quick side note, should anybody ever contact you claiming to be from your internet service provider without actually specifying which internet service provider that might be, the chances are it's probably a scam. I had my bank phone me the other day. And I am so vigilant about this shit. They were like, it was about like a mortgage payment or something. And 
they're like, hey, so we just need you to confirm this. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. And they're like, okay, um, we need this information. So, and I'm like, well, you're going to, I'm going to have to call you back. Like, I'm going to have to go find the number on your website. And they're like, no, it's the bank. And I'm like, bro, I know. But when you send me 70 emails a year telling me to always identify and call you back and all of this shit, when I do it, don't be pissy that I'm upset that I don't think you're my bank. F*** you. <laughs> as soon as I was aware of what was happening, I put the phone on loudspeaker and my friends and I proceeded to give this bastard a really bad day. Acting with 98-year-old grandpa levels of slowness and computer naivety, we were able to keep him on the phone for the best part of an hour, even going so far as to ask him where we might find certain letters on the keyboard and pretending that we had no idea what the mouse was for. <laughs> The conversation was brought to a satisfyingly hilarious conclusion where after about 55 minutes I mentioned to the man on the phone that I did not in fact have an internet connection. At this point he completely lost it, screaming into the phone that we were wasting his time and asking what we even used the computer for. My friend calmly responded, have you not heard of Solitaire? My nan had a computer and she just used it for typing letters because her typewriter broke. And so she was like, okay, so she bought, like, it was a brand new computer. I'm sure it was expensive. <laughs> and like a, a fancy ass printer. And she just used it to, uh, there was an application she had that had pictures of birds. And she had typed letters. And that was that. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Although on this occasion, the asshole was unlucky enough to run into two people that actually knew what they were doing, this is not always the case, and less technologically aware people are frequently tricked into granting outsiders unrestricted remote access to their computers. So just exactly who are these people? Although the text from many of these emails and the accents of the people on the phone lead us to believe that such scams are based out of the Middle East, India, or Pakistan, in reality, this is not often the case. Although it is undoubtedly true that a lot of telephone-based scams are run from call centers in India, recent re research indicates that around 63% of all internet-based scams scams originate in the United States. No way. Wow. That's crazy. So all the that that bad internet is just like part of the scam. Crazy. Is there a way this could be stopped? The short answer is no. Okay. Even though there are precautions that can minimize the risk, like using spam filters, installing and maintaining antivirus software, and never giving out any information to anybody that you don't know, we shall soon see that even the most hypervigilant individuals can fall victim to online scams. The Scam Baiters Ever since online scams became popular in the early 2000s, there have been those online who have made it their life's goal to unmask, shut down, or otherwise inconvenience the perpetrators by drawing attention to techniques that they use, advising people on how to remain safe online, or simply wasting their time typing in, tying them up in convoluted, frivolous email exchanges or telephone calls. However, one of the most well-known scam baiters, YouTuber Jim Browning, has really taken it to the next level. Using his expertise as both a networking and software engineer, he has on several occasions been able to reverse engineer hacking attempts and actually take control of the scammer's computer i've seen these i've not i don't think i've actually watched one of these because i'm always like nah that must be clickbait scam 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 it's a scam he was even able to successfully take control of a whole call center using its ccdv cameras and this was one of the few times that his incredible efforts actually did result in an arrest a result that is sadly far too uncommon. Oh my lord, that's it. I'm gonna go watch that video just after I make this. <laughs> but even Browning has fallen victim to a temporary lack of vigilance. On July the 26th, 2021, he was talking, he was talked into deleting his entire YouTube. I have heard of this and I know this now. I for sure know this. Deleting his entire YouTube channel because he was convinced that he was speaking with YouTube tech support. He wrote in a tweet, So to prove that anyone can be scammed, I was convinced to delete my YouTube channel because I was convinced I was talking to YouTube creator support. That is how good they are. Don't think that you are not able to fall victim to this because the guy who literally does this as a living, like baits people and does this and is a tech guy, fell for it. Yeah, don't always be vigilant. So apart from the advice I already mentioned, is there anything of practical value that could be taken away from any of this? Well, yes. According to people like Jim, a major cause of the high success rate in this sort of attack is that it will never happen to me. I'm too smart for this shit mindset. I myself try to live by the rule. It has happened to people far smarter than me, so there is no reason it could not happen to me. Just assuming you're not as smart as you think you are is just a good way to live life. Like, generally, like, I'm always just like... Just don't, don't, just, and not just that, but don't think you're as good as you think you are. It's very helpful in general. And it always makes things like, 
I don't know. It's just, it's just better to operate that way, I feel. There is one thing that we can all do to help prevent any sort of online scam from being successful. I know this sounds obvious, but tell people. Even if you are actually convinced that you're too intelligent to fall for such a thing, your mother, your father, your grandparents, or elderly neighbors might, might not be, so spread the words. And if in doubt, remember the time-honored cliche, if it sounds too good to be true, that's because it is. Yes. Yes. True. True. Um, thanks for watching. Don't fall for those scams. Nah, that must be clickbait. Scam, 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 it's a scam.